Okay, so um, let's just get started. Um, first, I want us to talk about you. I want us to talk about your career as a basketball player. Definitely, it's not it's not been easy. I definitely know that, and you know, you're one of the few Nigerians to have played in the WNBA, which makes you know, which adds some spice to your career. First, playing in the WNBA alongside representing Nigeria, how do you feel? How, how does it feel like? I think whenever you can play the highest level of any sport, it's an accomplishment. Um, it has been, you know, a lifelong goal of mine to play in the WNBA, and I'm glad that I, I was able to. I would have, you know, maybe liked to be there a little longer, but things just didn't work out that way. Um, I still had a pro career in Europe and Asia, so it kind of tied all of my childhood dreams together of seeing the world. And then once I started to become more serious about basketball and realized that I could play professionally, it just made the best of both worlds. Okay, that's, that's really cool. Yeah, you represented Nigeria too. And I mentioned the fact that you were part of the team, 2004, 2005, you know, um, African Championship. And of course, um, you, you have really added it, you know, with the national team. You have had your own you know, experience, you know. How was it playing with the national team, the Tigers of Nigeria, way back? That was 2004. Wow. How was it? Yeah, you know, I came uh, to my first time in Nigeria was 2003, and that's when I started playing with the national team. Um, it was something I didn't really know much about. I didn't know what to expect, but once I got a call, it was something that I had in the back of my mind. Uh, the first time I received a call was in 99, but I had torn my ACL, so I was injured at the time. So for those next four years, I kind of always had that um, idea back in the back of my head that, that it was something that I would do. So when I showed up, it was a completely new experience, okay. completely new continent, uh, new teammates, everything like that. And by some miraculous reason, whether it's it was our talent or the team's chemistry before I got there. We were able to win um, three tournaments, all three tournaments in, you know, the course of probably a two month span. Sure. Uh, and so that kind of kicked things off from there. Fantastic, fantastic. And, you know, because of, you know, the time you were the captain with the team at that time. And in 2011, you were given the assistant, you know, coach role with the D Tigress of Nigeria. Uh, how was it like that time being an assistant coach of a team you played for? That's a national team. How was it like? Uh, it was okay. It, it was a little um, closely removed to from my playing career, so it was kind of it was a little di difficult to kind of separate yourself from teammates that you you know had played with, and you kind yeah. of had to be a little more um, administrative. But it was definitely a learning experience. It wasn't uh, a great one. I'll say that, but um, you know, it was something that that was available at the time, and that I decided to do. Yeah. So, as an assistant coach, that has been added to your CV, no doubt. But in the future, if you are given the chance, okay, hey, um, from Doka, come, come and be the head coach for the D Tigers of Nigeria. Will you grab that chance? Um, I don't know why they would do that. Um, I feel like there's so good coaches who actually do this for a living that I think it would be a little foolish on my part to say, okay, yes, I could do it. Um, it, it. Most coaches that I know have been coaching for a really long time and they knew ahead of time that this is something that they want to do. So it's not like you can just kind of say because you play that you can coach. It usually yeah, it's doesn't it's work not actually way. that. You, you had a time, you had a stint with the team. And there is this popular, you know, popular opinion that a player, both football, basketball, name it, that if you have played for a team, it is advisable for an ex-player to come and be the coach of a team. Okay, that aside, your brother, Ime Udoka, is also an head coach for Boston Celtics. So why can't you be the head coach for the Tigers? Come on. <laughs> well, he's been coaching and that's his actual job and he was an assistant for nine years. So it's a little yeah. bit different. Um, it's not, like I said, very few people can make a successful transition from um, playing to coaching. And it, again, it's not something you just kind of decide, okay, yeah, I can coach yeah. a team. It takes work and practice. I'm not saying that I couldn't do it, 
Um, but I know that there are plenty of you know, Nigerian coaches, whether in Nigeria or the or America here, that are more than capable than myself, you know. And so I would definitely like to see a Nigerian female coaching a female team someday soon. Okay. I, I don't know the reason why you're trying to stay clear of you know a coaching role with the data aggress of Nigeria, but you know, I believe I believe someday when you are announced as the head coach, I'm gonna put a cross uh, through to you that oh, you know I said yeah, that time. Well, believe me, it's going, well, it's going it's, to be nice. It's, it's a difficult job, okay? It's a difficult job to okay. coach. It's a very difficult job to coach in Nigeria. And I'm not saying that it's impossible, but okay. if it was asked of me, I would recommend my, my friends who actually do this for a living and have been doing this for 20 years. So. That's, that's fantastic of you. Fantastic. Nice one, too. Oh, that, 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 that's a very good one, you know, because I believe there are some people that, okay, they believe, okay, I played for the national team before, so I'm entitled to be an head coach later on. You understand? You have seen people like that talking about, I understand your pragmatic point of view. It is welcome. Uh, well, well, only time we tell. The only constant thing is change. So let's see how event on food. Okay. Um, looking at looking at the national team, the head coach, and you know how, you know, we have actually emanated, announced ourselves to the world level. How are you going to rate, you know, the the, the um the coaches, the present, uh, it is ugly, the pre uh, previous coach for the Tigress. How are you going to rate them in terms of how they have fit this team to this level? Well, I think with any team, first comes the players. Um, when you're a coach, if you have good players and good talent, it makes your job so much easier. Um, I think you see the true test of a coach when you don't have talent and you don't have great players because then you can see what they really are able to do. Um, I don't know him personally, but I know that we have a lot of talent and okay. the team is really good. And so I think for him, he's had a luxury of having great players to choose from and work with and okay. either, you know, whether it's a combination of both. I mean, I, obviously he's doing well, he's one. Okay, that's, that's very cool. That's very cool of you, okay. Um, let's now go to Boston Celtics. I know I'm headed to just one destination, and that is your brother. You know, when the news broke out, like I was like, "Oh my God!" In Nigeria, it was it was a very it was very special to we Nigerians and Africa at large having someone like that. And you know, I love the fact that Ime has been you know he has been working on this for a very long time. He's been with the national team. I mentioned it earlier that I was an assistant coach for almost a decade. Come on, it is worth it. He's been with San Antonio Sports. He's worked with Greg Popovich. I hope I'm correct. You know, um, he's worked with top class coaches too. And, you know, he has also been linked with other NBA sides, but not really compared to Boston Celtics. How did you feel your brother, you know, being the head coach of a Boston Celtics side, a team with a very rich history when it comes to NBA championship? How do you feel? Uh, I was so happy. I mean, I, I kind of knew. I know. I I didn't even knew what was taking place um, before I left. I was actually in Nigeria when it was announced. So I didn't know when it was going to be announced officially, but I knew it was kind of in the works. Um, you know, a lot of people have said through the years, like, why didn't he get his opportunity sooner? Or it's about time or this yeah. or that or the other. But, you know, sometimes you just have to wait your turn and the best situation comes up. And I think compared to the previous teams that he interviewed with, this was by far the best situation um, with the the best franchise with the storied history, like yeah. you said. And they actually have young talent. And I think they were looking for a young coach and yeah. he had a three with those players from Team USA. So that helped him yeah. and everything just snowballed. In, you know, happened at the right time. So I was so happy for him. I'm still so happy and so proud of him. Um, I think that it opens the eyes of people to um, coaching in general. And I think that there needs to definitely be more emphasis on coaching as a career. Um, yeah. It's actually something that you can do and not just for ex-players, but yeah. people who are interested in the sport and are willing to study and put the time in because it's a really difficult job. Definitely. Yeah. Um, when, when that news actually broke out, you were in Nigeria and um, I, I saw some, I, actually, you actually, you know, you had an excursion to some places in Nigeria. I was monitoring some of those videos and it was a really, really nice time. 
days after your brother was announced as the head coach, you're having the best time of your life out there in Nigeria. <laughs> okay, now let's let's look at you know um that Boston Celtics team, like you said, the very young team. I think Kemba Walker will not be with the team next season. I, I, I think he's not going to be with the team. They have Jason Tatum. They have pretty pretty young guys going to next season. They have a young coach. I mean, what kind of you know threats do you think they will pose to oppositions? And how far do you think they can go having a coach like your brother? I think they need a point guard. That's one of the areas that they're looking for. And I think they need um, to figure out an offensive scheme or how however whatever Ime decides to do with them and um, you know they're already in contention of you know making the playoffs so now it's you know how much further they can go and you know I don't know what's going to happen this year but it's definitely something I think in the very near future they can contend for a championship for sure I mean I know they're they're going um, for their 18th championship so it's a goal of theirs for sure I know it's a goal of Ime's um, being is how he's won as an assistant coach in 2014 with San Antonio. So yeah. it just will depend on front office moves, what they're what they're going to do with their roster to make it better. Okay, yeah, you, you have been with this team and, you know, um, you have actually experienced what the kind of treatment um, you get with the Federation. Um, what, what do you think about how the detigress of Nigeria, when it comes to how the Federation are handling national basketball teams, what's your opinion about it? I would think right now that things are okay. Um, I don't really know much about the behind the scenes stuff, but I think anytime you can get uh, our team to be talented and focused enough, um, that's definitely a step in the right direction. Um, are things perfect? I'm sure they're not. Um, could they, things be improved? Definitely. I don't really, again, I don't really know all of the deals, but um, I just know from previous experience the kind of things that can go wrong. And I guess because, you know, the team made it to Tokyo, that's a great thing. And um, they're, you know, ready to compete. And I, I think the biggest thing a lot of times um, are distractions. And I think the whole roster with you know the sisters are they going to play are they not going to play that was a huge distraction that i don't think needed to happen at this point in time like right when they're trying to get ready to go um, okay. prepare for the olympics so i think those are the type of things that you know are, are, are disruptive and all right f f fantastic fantastic yeah lastly i know you're a big fan of ground shoot basketball like I said, I, I took time to watch some of your videos. I stumbled on a, a lot of them. I saw a 2000 and I think it was 2004 when we played against Senegal, Nigeria Senegal. Yeah, I saw your younger version that time. It was, you know, very nice to see you play the game. And of course, you know, um, I saw, I saw a video where you're talking about grassroots, how you said the best way to improve basketball is, you know, starting from the grassroots, helping the younger ones, you know. What have you done? You might have you would have done something in the past, you know, to, to make this happen. That is promoting the game in this part of the world. Yeah, I've come um, back and done a few camps here and there, and I've also given out equipment. Um, I think that it's such a big job to do that there needs to be many hands on deck. It's it, it, you know a lot of people are individually doing their part. But if sports is going to be where it needs to be, it needs to be um, it needs to be given and, and supported by the government. And I say that because that's how it's done in America. It's kind of a culture. It's our lifestyle um, where there are programs that are either through a park district or a school or something like that. But support from your government um, that would be a great start. I know it's probably you know not likely maybe in this point in time but if it if it wants to go if we want it to go where it needs to go that that's definitely some per, uh, party that needs to step up okay. but you know i've been playing since i was i started playing basketball on 11 years old so Ooh. it's wow behind a lot of times because now kids are starting when they're five five years old and they start playing it's just for fun and they learn the skills and then yeah you know you can figure out if you can specialize in it and if it's something that you can do for either a career or to get okay. yourself a scholarship for college there's right. just so many different ways but it needs to start you know when kids are younger that way um yeah. the continent won't be as behind where they're 
you know, picking up a ball at 15 or 16. All right, so are you planning to do something like that again? Yes. Okay, good. Cool. Yes, um, COVID, you know, has kind of thrown a wrench in a lot of plans. I mean, I did I did a camp for two years, and then for the last two years, it's kind of been, um, you know, up in the air just because of COVID and the, the state of our world right now. But it's definitely something that I want to continue, and I want it to get Very better. Nice. And there are a lot of people, like I said, doing things on their own part that should be commended as well. We have some message here from uh, Mr. Egusi. Um, he said, I hear Senegal really invests in basketball. Nigeria needs to invest and develop grassroots. So, so but I want to say a very big thank you to you for joining me tonight. Yeah, I really appreciate it. And thanks for your time, Mufo. You're welcome. Let's yeah, go and, Nigeria watching tonight. Yeah. Wishing everybody luck. Yeah, and do well to enjoy the game tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, thank you. All right, bye. Bye.